investigation is underway in Commerce City after a fisherman finds human remains. Plus, as temperatures rise, so do energy costs. We'll look at how much you can expect to pay. 7 News Now begins with 10 minutes of nonstop news. And here's what's happening right now. Federal health officials are saying they found salmonella at a Texas plant. A Mexican-grown jalapeno tested positive. It may lead investigators to the source of the salmonella outbreak that has sickened hundreds of people. Boulder police have arrested five teenage boys in connection with puppy thefts from the Humane Society of Boulder Valley. That happened last month. This is one of the puppies that was recovered. One is still missing. Four of the boys were accused of using a crowbar to pry open a back door. Eight pit bull puppies and a miniature pincher puppy were taken. A fifth boy is charged with theft by receiving and intimidation of a witness. And hello, everyone. Today is Monday. It's July 21st. I'm Andrew Hugh, and this is 7 News Now. And we are on fire alert this afternoon as crews continue to battle a large wildfire in Jefferson County, just north of the town of Deckers. This is a live picture of the fire from Air Tracker 7. Now, this fire has burned at least 140 acres so far. The cooler temperatures and higher relative humidity have helped firefighters overnight. 7 News reporter Jacqueline Allen is live near Deckers right now. And Jacqueline, what is the status of the fire? Well, and the fact that there's not a huge cloud of smoke behind me where the fire is, that's a good sign of the progress they're making. I'm live here along the South Platte River. Now, helicopters have been making good use also of this water source to fill up and do those bucket drops that they've been doing all day throughout the day today. Now, the Forest Service has been very concerned about our safety, so they've been keeping us a good distance from the fire. But today, for the first time, we were briefly allowed access to the fire lines. And here's a look at the action. Wildfire. More than 225 firefighters dig in below. There it is, the water. And attack from above. It's just so scary. While people who live nearby get ready to leave at a moment's notice, the Forest Service has evacuated 15 homes in the Ox Oak subdivision and put Spring Creek on notice. So we called as many people as we knew and told them that it was probably a good idea to pack up what they could and leave it at their front doors, fill their pillowcases, fill whatever they had of their treasures and just leave it and we'll wait and find out what happens. They're used to it by now. They've seen four major wildfires tear through this area, including the largest in state history, the Hayman Fire. This fire is getting close to a portion of the Hayman Fire and if it were to continue to burn in that direction, then that would be an area that it's very likely we would catch this fire. We're just fortunate not to be in the situation that we were in 2002 with the extremely dry fuels and a terrible drought conditions. It is dry here, here though. The weather seems to be cooperating with cooler temperatures last night and a wind shift that helped slow down the spread. People living here just hope they stay lucky, but until it's out, they'll stay packed. We haven't had any rain. It's almost August. Yeah, people are worried. I don't want to show you just how close this fire. I want to show you just how close this fire today was to the Hayman fire over here. These burn trees. That's one of the finger temperatures in the 90s. We found plenty of people out jogging and biking along Cherry Creek. So have we reached our high for the day? Let's check in with 7 News Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson, who has a first look at your forecast. How do we do today, Mike? Better than yesterday, and 100 degrees yesterday. It's only been about out fishing for a quiet day of fishing, and instead you make a gruesome discovery. Police say a man was walking along the Burlington Canal when he found a human leg yesterday in Commerce City. 7 News reporter Lance Hernandez is live at 58th and York. And uh, Lance, investigators were back out at the scene today, and they found even more bones. of what appears to be a young adult. Now, they're not sure if it was male or female yet, nor do they know how those bones got there. There's a lot of different scenarios that we're looking at right now. Authorities say the fisherman was walking on the west side of the canal when he found the bones. He called police. They confirmed they were human remains, so they came back out and search some more. And about 20 feet, 25 feet from that first find, they unfortunately discovered um, more human remains. Police say they're considering a number of scenarios. One, is it a transient that died of natural causes and then somehow ended up where he's at now or she? Um, or are we looking at foul play? Bicyclists who use the adjacent South Platte River bike path asked us about all the police activity. When we told them about the skeletal remains, they couldn't believe it. That's very unusual because this uh, this is a fairly low crime area, believe it or not. 
Nothing ever goes down here. Investigators are trying to find answers to numerous questions. Who was this person? How did they die? How long have they been here? We know it's at least over six months just based on the condition of the bones. Could it be longer? Yes. We're still looking into that. We have the Adams County Coroner's Office out here. Back live, you can see that there are crews in the canal itself. They told us a little bit earlier today they had to uh, shut off the water inflow to that canal so that they could get out there and search uh, the bottom of the canal as well as be concerned about the banks itself. They tell us that it is possible work crews uncovered the body while dredging the canal a few months back that perhaps they didn't even know it. Now, one of the keys to solving how this person died is trying to find out who this person is. Live in Commerce City, Lance Hernandez, 7 News. And so, Lance, how do they even begin to, to figure that out? Well, of course, there are no fingerprints right now, so they just have to use uh, any teeth that may remain. They also say that there was some clothing, so they hope to find either a belt buckle, maybe a ring, uh, some other items of jewelry. And if they do, they'll make those public, put some pictures out, and hope that somebody recognizes them and can help authorities with the identification. And All right, Lance, thank you very much. Work has begun at the XL Center in St. Paul, Minnesota.